Two, yep. <laughs> and uh, I'm proud of you guys. And uh, Veterans Day is, uh, my wife got up this morning and thanked me for being a veteran. And, you know, not too many, we don't get too much thanks these days. Uh, they, they did, many people think it's a holiday, Monday. And, but uh, for us, we've lost friends in war. And, um, and we think of them. They paid the ultimate sacrifice. Never forget that. Those of us who lived, we praise the Lord for that. But it's the ones that died that, that we miss. And uh, so I thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. Revelation chapter 13. I will not finish this message today. It will probably take two Sundays at least. Revelation chapter 13. Then I stood on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea, having seven horns and ten, uh, excuse me, seven heads and ten horns, and on his horns ten crowns. On his head was the name Blasphemous Name. Now the beast which I saw was like a leopard, his feet was like the feet of a bear, his mouth like the mouth of a lion. The dragon gave him his power, his throne, and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as if it had been mortally wounded. And his deadly wound was healed, and all the world marveled and followed the beast. So they worshipped the dragon, who gave authority to the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast, who is able to make war with them? And he was given a, a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies. And he was given authority to continue for 42 months. And then he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and those who dwell in heaven. It was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. Authority was given him over every tribe and tongue and nation. All who dwell on the earth will worship him whose name had not been written in the book of life, that the Lamb was slain for the, before the foundation of the world. If anyone has an ear, let him hear. He who leads into captivity shall go into captivity. And he who kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Father, we come to you this morning praising you and thanking you for the ultimate sacrifice, Jesus Christ, our wonderful Lord. And Father, as we worshiped you this morning, as we sang songs, as we, our hearts meditated upon you, Father, may this message also uh, speak to our hearts. Holy Spirit, guide my heart, my thought process right now, for we only want what you want us to hear and have. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. In, in Revelation chapter 13, you're going to see here the revival of the old Roman Empire. And as we continue this series on prophecy, we'll get into these uh, later on. Uh, we will have a break, though. Uh, uh, Lord's Day of my heart, uh, during the month of December, the first four Sundays are going to be all on Christ's birth and leading up to Christmas. So I want to make that whole month a special month uh, concerning our Lord and His birth and what Christmas is all about. And uh, then go back into prophecy in January. In this chapter describes the Antichrist worldwide kingdom. Worldwide kingdom. God's perspective is at hand here. The Antichrist is described here in our text as a fierce beast because his rule is characterized by a beast-like brutality. This one world dictator com coming up here in the, in the near future, he's not going to be a kind person. Especially after the three and a half years. The first three and a half years, he's going to be likable. They're going to love the guy. But then the last, when he breaks the covenant with Israel, that last three and a half years, they're really going to see the beastly image of him. He's going to rule brutality. He's going to be brutal. As a matter of fact, when the Bible says that, uh, that he, in verse 2, now the beast, the Greek word for beast here refers to a dangerous animal, a venomous animal beast in the wild. That's what the Greek word means. So he's not a pleasant guy. You know, when you look at, when you compare this one world kingdom that that beast wants, I think it's interesting the contrast between God's kingdom and the devil's kingdom. Amen? There's a vast con contrast here. You see, God's kingdom is righteousness and holy and just and compassionate and humble. Amen? That's the kingdom of God. 
where the kingdom of the devil is the opposite. It's unrighteousness, it's unholy, it's unjust, it's cruel, it's full of pride. What a contrast. What a contrast. I want us to notice that from the time of the fall, I want you to watch this, from the time of the fall, Adam and Eve, and, and his fall, the devil has always wanted to be like God. Always. He's always wanted to be like God, and he's always wanted a kingdom like God's kingdom. Never forget that. And also, he's always wanted to be worshipped like God. And during the tribulation period, he'll have that opportunity as he makes a one world uh, demonic kingdom and his ultimate goal is to set himself up as God and to be worshipped. Satan has always wanted that. In this present time, the Holy Spirit is restraining that the devil's program according to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 6 and 7. It hasn't come yet because the Holy Spirit's still here. When the Holy Spirit is gone after the rapture, then the, the Antichrist is going to work fast to produce this one world kingdom that he wants to rule and reign in. So everything must be done according, though, to God's timetable. Amen? You see, the devil has no power to change that one iota. When God says it's time for him to reign, he can't reign until God gives him permission to. So I want us to notice the first thing this morning. Notice the first beast from the sea, verses 1 through 10 in Revelation 13. The first beast from the sea. Notice verse 1, that he rises. The Bible says he rises up out of the sea. He rises out of the sea. Now, now go to Revelation chapter 17. In Revelation chapter 17, verse 15... Revelation chapter 17 and verse number 15. Then he said to me, The waters which you saw where the harlots sit are peoples, multitudes, nations, and what? Isn't it? See, see one thing we, you need to learn as a Bible believer, let the Scripture interpret the Scripture. When you get to Revelation 13, what do you mean rising up out of the sea? What's he talking about? Well, it's interpreted for you in chapter 17, verse 15. Out of the sea are kingdoms and nations and many peoples and tongues. That's what it is. That's what it is. And so it is the sea of humanity that make up the Gentile world powers. That's what's coming out of the sea here. And I want you to notice in verse number 1 also... He has seven heads and ten horns, according to verse 1. This symbolism is explained also in Revelation chapter 17, verses 7 through 13. We'll get to that later on in the future. All right. The Bible says in Revelation 17 that the harlot, the harlot of Revelation 17 rides upon the beast and is destroyed by the beast. And I got a special message on that one uh, called the harlot church. And we're going to learn who the harlot church is. And the beast is going to ride upon her. The harlot church is going to welcome the Antichrist. And we're going to see who that is in the future. So the seven, horn, seven heads and, and ten horns all talks about the, the kingdom coming together and riding upon the, the, the big one world ecumenical church is going, to, is going to ride upon this beast. And so we're going to look at that later on. Notice he says he's a... Verse 5 and 6, he's a blasphemer. He's a blasphemer. Blasphemy is one of the Antichrist's chief characteristics. Because this is the mark of the devil. He hates God. Never forget that. The devil hates God. And he hates God's people. You think the devil loves you, you better wake up, believer. He don't love you. <laughs> he hates you. He ain't going to come up and say, oh, I love you. Uh-uh. devil wraps, wraps your arms around you, you can count on a knife slitting your throat. He don't love you. He hates you. The devil hates God. He's a blasphemer. He hates God and everything, remember this, associated with God, he hates it. Because he's a blasphemer. Look at Daniel chapter 